Hello and welcome to Woolen Hearted. This is episode 6 of a podcast about spinning and natural dyeing, knitting and toy making. I hope that you're well. Uh, I hope that however life looks like at the moment in your part of the world that you're keeping safe, that you're keeping busy um, and that you're finding solace from crafty creative projects. Um, I know I am very much so and I'm looking forward to sharing with you some of the things I've been working on recently in today's episode. I've got a little bit of spinning and natural dyeing to share with you. I've got some uh, toy making and I've got lots and lots of knitting. As somehow since my last episode I seem to have casted on all the things. <laughs> So since my last episode, the Magic 3 Make Along has begun. The Magic 3 Make Along is um, a five month, I think, make along running from the 1st of May to the 1st of October, in which we are encouraged to make three items for small people in our lives. So um, a top, a bottom, and then a toy. And it's organised by my friend Mimi of the Yarn Chicks podcast. And it's the fourth year it's running and the fourth year I've participated. So I'm really excited to get started on this make-along because it really makes me feel like summer is just around the corner when this begins. Um, it's inspired me to cast on a few items. Um, I don't normally have more than one thing on my needles as a general rule of thumb as I find it difficult to concentrate on more than one project at a time but each of the projects is quite distinct and so it gives it's quite good to have um, a bit of variety at the moment when some evenings I'm just a bit too tired to, to think and other evenings I really want something to concentrate on and to absorb my thoughts. So the first thing I've casted on is knit in um, this very very deep stash Rowan summer tweed yarn so I have the blue colourway and an oatmeal colour and this is 70% um, silk and 30% cotton and I mentioned last time that this um, yarn I'd bought um, from a clothing down sale from the yarn shop in my hometown so I got it at a really good price and I at the time had intended to knit um, baby items with it because it was when I was pregnant with my son but I just never got round to it and um, luckily I bought uh, six balls, six skeins of the blue and three of the white of the oatmeal so I've got enough to make a really nice sized jumper for him. So I've cast it on and this is how far I've got so far. This so this is the Sea Spray Jumper, which is by Chrissy Graham of the Snappy Stitches podcast. And it's knit uh, flat in four pieces, so from the bottom up. I'll be um, continuing the striped pattern up until the armholes and then that will stop and it's got a lovely rolled hem. And yeah, it's a very simple, very... Um, <sighs> very easy to knit on pattern but what I really like about the pattern is it's been very well written and very well thought out and I think it would be an ideal um, first project for somebody who's not knitted a garment before particularly um, uh, if you've never knitted um, in pieces before uh, I can really really recommend it it's very well written very well thought out and very well put together so I'm really enjoying it it's very simple it's very soothing um, I've enjoyed just working on it in the evenings when I've been in need of something just to <sighs> cool down and uh, enjoy watching a podcast or two uh, without having to concentrate too much so yeah so that's the sea spray pullover and I just love these colours they are working so well together uh, it feels like a really nautical sort of um, sort of garment so yeah I can imagine this being worn on evenings at the beach in the summer when it gets a little bit chilly and uh, yeah I'm 
enjoying working on that. I'm knitting the age 10 size, which is the biggest size on the pattern because when I uh, gathered all the yarn together, <coughs> I realised I had enough to knit uh, the age 10. So I'm trying to just knit things with a bit of room to grow for my children now. I've learnt the hard way that it's a bit of a shame to spend lots of hours knitting something that only can be worn for a couple of months. So um, I could have made the age eight, which he would uh, be able to wear more or less straight away because we're tending to put him in age six to eight sized clothes now, even though he's not yet five, um, but he's a very tall little boy. But uh, I would have had yarn left over and this is also sort of... Um, one of the reasons to make it is to try and use up some really old stash. I've got quite a few very old stash items of cotton or tensile or um, bamboo yarn, I think, some of which I bought new, some of which I bought in a sale, some of which were second hand, and I want to just try to use them up now for the children. Um, I probably wouldn't buy cotton brand new anymore because I'm aware now that it's uses quite a lot of resources to produce and it's not necessarily fair trade. Um, I haven't yet discovered a fair trade cotton yarn which I think is a real shame because it's possible to buy fair trade cotton um, for dressmaking and also for um, uh, as, as a ready to wear item so it seems strange that nobody as far as I'm aware has decided to make a fair trade cotton yarn or even a recycled cotton although as I say that I believe Rosa Puma, Puma has a recycled cotton yarn in her shop in range I have to look into that um, but anyway at the moment I'm still in the stage of trying to use up what I have and that's one of the um, real guiding principles of this year's make along for the Magic 3 Mal which is to try and use what we already have to hand and also to um, pick up old lingering projects if we have them. Whips are very much welcome as our um, mending or upcycling projects so I don't really have anything that is really needing to be mended um, at the moment with our children's clothes far as I can remember. There's plenty of mending to be done for the grown-ups, um, <laughs> which that's a whole other podcast topic. Um, but yeah, as far as I can remember, there's nothing that needs to be mended for the children. So anyway, that's the project for my son. So that's going to be his top. And then I think I'm going to knit him some cotton uh, socks because, I, as I said, I've got these balls of cotton yarn and I think that they would make some really nice lightweight socks for the summer. Uh, again, on these sort of cooler days like today when, when you need something on your feet just to keep them a little bit warm. So, um, For my daughter, I've casted on the Sunny Lou dress out of this beautiful, beautiful French linen yarn by Derrera Natura. So this is the Antigone base, which is 100% French linen. It's a sport weight and it's in the Prunelle colorway. So I do have another <laughs> it's got all tangled, I did. <laughs> do you have another colourway uh, of this yarn? Which this is the Mistral, which is a lovely forget me not blue. And I'm intending to make a little cardigan, a little summery cardigan out of this one. But this one, the Prunelle, I'm making the Sunny Lou dress by Annie Raiden. And I've cast it on. The first part so this is it so far I say the first part because off the top of my head I can't remember whether it's the front the back the sleeve the right sleeve the left sleeve I'm I think it's the right sleeve and I think it's going to be like this but I'm at that lovely stage in a pattern where I can't quite work it out for myself and I'm just having to 100% trust the pattern designer because I have no idea what's going on really but 
um, I have to say, like the um, sea spray sweater, this pattern is really well written, really well thought out and very, very easy to follow. So I'm really pleased with it so far. The only difficulty, which is very evident as I hold this up to the camera, is I'm worried that my gauge is not quite correct because I'm using this linen yarn and I've never worked with linen before. It doesn't seem to fill out the stitches um, as wool would, which is a bit difficult because it's making it very airy and very see-through, which is not what it's supposed to look like. So I'm thinking that I may have to um, switch down possibly one, possibly two needle sizes, still knit the biggest size, which is the 12 to 18 month size, and just hope for the best. So it's knitting up differently to what I expected, and um, because the pattern was, was created for wool yarn, uh, not for linen, so I imagine it's the characteristic of linen, which it's the first time I've ever knitted with linen, so I'm not not I'm not used to it um, I'm not used to the way it behaves and naughty knitter that I am I didn't make a gauge swatch um, mainly because I don't tend to do gauge swatches for children's things I know I probably should to be sure that I get them at the size I want but because I always generally make the larger size of whatever pattern I'm making um, I've never yet had a problem with fit um, because like, because the garment has always ended up larger than uh, than the smallest size, so I'm just at a bit of a dilemma whether to rip back and do a gauge swatch, and then on the smaller needles, or just rip back and start again on the smaller needles. I haven't quite decided, but apart from the way the fabric is knitting up, I'm really enjoying working with the linen it's very different to wool it really feels like knitting with string um i hope that and i understand that uh linen softens with wear so it's not it's not scratchy or anything it's you know it's lovely but whereas wool has a sort of a plump quality to it this is more almost a crispness which i think will be really cooling and very um comfortable to wear in the hot weather uh, but yeah I want to just be sure that the gauge is is correct because I don't I don't really like this see-through quality that it's got um, the way it's knitted up so far so I think I will rip back and I'll I think I'll be good and I think I'll make a gauge swatch just to uh, to yeah to keep to try and get it right because this wasn't the most inexpensive of yarns um i think it's about 12 euros a ball so it was a little bit of an extravagance um as i said i'm trying mainly to use up what i already have in my stash um but this is the first yarn i've bought this year so i don't think i'm doing too badly having withheld uh buying yarn since until may so uh yeah that's going to be a, a future project for over the weekend, I think, to rip back and start again. So, But I'm really enjoying it so far and I, I really, really love this colour. I'm so glad I went for this colour, even though it's a little on the dark side. I was worried that it would be too dark for little baby. Uh, but it's, yeah, it's a very special colourway, a uh, very special name as well. So, yeah, I want to make it right. Keeping in the Magic 3 Mal theme, I've also done some toy making in the last fortnight. Um, I'm in my work as well and hearted as toy making, um, sort of beyond the podcast, which is my very modest little uh, self employed business of making mohair bears. One of the projects that is a long term project that I'm working on is to create a pattern for a bear which eventually will be safety tested so that it's compliant with the CE regulations and which basically means I would be able to sell it, um, it would be safe, it would be certified as safe for children and I would be able to sell it as a children's toy because at the moment the bears I produce that I sell 
are considered to be um, collector's pieces for adults and they're not actually suitable for children under the age of 14 because of the components that I use. So I'm working uh, first on creating the pattern for the bear that I want and I haven't still quite fully got it exactly how I want so I'm having to make lots and lots of versions of it and practice as well using the um, safety joints and the safety eyes because they're not the easiest things to work with it's much it's actually much easier as a toy maker to use the traditional cotter pin joints and glass eyes <clears throat> mainly because for example with the eyes you can put them in once the head is stuffed whereas with the safety eyes you have to put them in before you stuff and it's quite difficult to get a good um, a true representation of what the bear will look like um, when you work in this way anyway um, so I'm making um, lots of different prototypes of the bear and I'm as I'm not allowed to sell them I'm giving them away as gifts um, either to family members and friends or um, for the magic three Mal so I've made this little bear since we last spoke so he's made from a quite a short but dense mohair so these are the safety eyes and then he's fully jointed on the arms and legs so this was a, a new version of the pattern I've been working on and I've decided that this is going to be one of the bears that I'm going to donate to the prize fund I'll be sending him off to Mimi and he's going to be one of the one of the prizes for the Magic 3 Mal so he's a lovely little polar bear. I'm really pleased with how the yar, um, the mohair at this scale uh, looks because I was worried it would he would look a bit bold, but he actually looks he looks rather sweet in this mohair. So my son did ask if he could keep him, but uh, we've already got quite a lot of bears, as I'm sure you can imagine, and I have in the past four past three magic mouths I have made a bear as a prize so um, I'm going to be making two bears this year so this is the first and I'll probably make a smaller smaller one as well um, but yeah I'm really pleased with I mean pleased with how the mo has worked out because that was a new new trial the face I'm fairly pleased with I'm trying to find a style for the children's bears particularly of the mouth um, that is sort of friendly and smiley um, but yeah it's just taking a little bit of practice to get that right so um, I'm sure I'll be making a few more versions which I can share here if you're interested uh, it's always fun making prototypes because the mohair fabric is quite unlike other fabric. I, I could make it up in calico as a sort of twirl, but it doesn't behave in quite the same way. You don't get that kind of uh, stiffness that comes from the mohair because it's the mohair is woven into a cotton backing. So I find it's not quite as um, true to the finished, the real finished um, object as I would like. So uh, yeah, I'm... I'm pleased with how he's turned out and I'm looking forward to sending him off to Berlin once the uh, post is a little bit back to normal. It's not wanting to... there we go. So yeah, little snow bear for someone participating in the Magic 3 Mal. Um, I've also done a little bit of spinning these last few weeks. Um, I've been working my way slowly through my fleece to finish game project, which is the uh, Lourdes fleece, which I scoured and skirted and have started carding. And I've already spun um, some some of the yarn, and I've been naturally dyeing it with weld. So this was the first dye bath. then the second and I have since done a third 
so I've almost I've got 75 grams now of weld coloured yarn it's interesting that the second and third dye bath seem very similar um, it's not as light in this one as I was expecting it to be so I think I'll be able to squeeze one more um, dye bath out of um, out of that dye pot and then I'll start fresh. I think I'm going to continue with the yellows because I'm really really excited at the prospect of making green when I um, manage to get my indigo dye vat underway. I looked into my ingredients and my dye stuffs the other day and also into my notes for setting up an indigo dye vat but unfortunately I don't have the right lime um i thought i had some and i don't and none of our friends have any and all of the uh, online sources that i would go to are currently not sending out anything and we're not allowed to the builders merchants at the moment or the builders merchants have been closed up until now to the public i assume they're still closed but i don't know um I haven't I haven't looked into that but I think it's going to be a project I'm going to save for perhaps July and August when I know that the weather will be nice and warm to keep that dive at at the right ambient temperature so I'm going to just keep working on my yellows and I might as a little change um dye with some onion skins because I've got plenty of onion skins that I've been saving up over the winter um and see what other yellows I can get but I'm really pleased so far I'm particularly pleased with my spinning um as I talked quite extensively about it in a previous podcast I am really pleased with how I'm managing to get a, a, a consistently fine yarn now because that's something I really struggled to get um in my early years as a spinner so yeah I'm really pleased with that and I'm enjoying just working on it here and there in between um I'm finding spinning a quite energy consuming at the moment so I'm tending to knit a bit more in the evenings right now but um it's nice to do a little bit from time to time and just sit at my wheel and spin um in the evening when everyone is in bed uh I've been enjoying spinning on our balcony as well when it's been warm enough just to be outside and to have a, have the lovely view uh, of our neighbour's garden and the mountains beyond so uh, yeah it's spinning is always uh, very much a therapeutic meditative activity for me it's although I have a production wheel now it's more about the the the, the process of the spinning and that moment spent completely absorbed in the fibre uh, So the final project I want to talk about today is a little cheeky project um, that I casted on rather unexpectedly at the end of last week. Um, I say a cheeky project because as I think I've mentioned before I tend to try to only have one at the most two projects on my needles and by casting this on I, if I include my blanket project which is ongoing I now have four things on my needles. So. I'm not sure how I'm going to manage having all these different projects. I tend to prefer just to have one or two because that helps me to focus and be more productive. Um, otherwise I find that things just uh, can tend to languish and then never get finished. And actually that's not correct. I have five things on my needles now because I have a cardigan project for myself which um, I talked about in my first podcast episode and which has currently stalled because I'm not entirely happy with the fit on my body as it is at the moment so 
Anyway, that one has sort of been banished to the naughty corner uh, at the moment. It's the Gentle Days cardigan by Vera Valamaki, which is a beautiful, beautiful pattern and which I definitely want to have in my wardrobe. I'm just not entirely happy with the fit of the garment as I'm knitting it up now, which is a real shame because it's actually the second time I've knitted it. Um, but as is the way for the postpartum body, um, I'm in a very sort of lumpy bumpy phase of early motherhood at the moment and it's not made easier by some of the medication I have to take at the moment which has made me put on some extra weight. So um, yes, I think it's, I haven't fogged it back, I haven't decided what I want to do with it so it's just been carefully put away in, in a plastic bag so the moths don't get it and I think I'll pull it out again in the autumn and see um, see how I feel about it in a few months time. Uh, my blanket project is still ongoing. I haven't done any work on it for a little while, um, but I will try and get that final row so that I've got a nine by nine square finished before the start of the summer. And then I will also put that away to pick up again in the autumn because I think it would be nice to have a little break from it. But anyway, so those are um, the sort of the long-term projects. I've spoken about my most recent cast on. And then there's another cast on which I have been thinking about for quite a long time and not felt confident to get started on. Um, and then all of a sudden at the end of last week, I just felt very inspired um, and I was encouraged by a few friends. Mimi, who I've mentioned already, Libvid, and also Meg from uh, Mrs M's Curiosity Cabinet, amongst other people. And uh, yeah, so I seem to have <laughs> cast on a penguono for myself. And the Penguino is a pattern by uh, Stephen West. And I have seen Mimi's version and also Emma of the Woolly Mammoth Fibres podcast. Um, Mimi made a very uh, characteristic of Mimi, very colourful, very beautiful, mild version. And uh, Emma's version was also very colourful, made from... Um, naturally dyed yarns. Uh, the pattern is a very colourful, very fun, playful pattern and I have been sort of drawn to it because I thought it would make a lovely bed jacket sort of for uh, wearing um, in the evenings and the early mornings if I don't want to put my dressing gown on, um, to sort of have something quite warm and bulky to put on over my pyjamas. Um, I know it can be worn as a, as a garment that you wear out of the house but I still don't know if I'm fully cool enough to to get away with wearing one but we shall see I think it's good to have an intention already for it as to to wear around the home and maybe if I feel brave enough I'll wear it out but um as I said it's a very colorful pattern in its original form and that was the thing that was putting me off because although I'm enjoying for example at the moment working with natural dye and I did feel quite inspired by Emma's version to make a natural dyed version because I do have quite a number of skeins of my own naturally dyed yarn. I'm just unsure whether I would wear it very much and I don't want to spend time and energy knitting something that's quite large that I wouldn't wear. And then I was looking through yet again uh, at the different versions that have been made and I stumbled across the version by Yarns by Simone. And I just fell in love with it because it is a uh, natural sheep coloured version or it looks like it. I don't know whether it's naturally, uh, whether it's the natural sheep shades in her version or whether they've been dyed, whether white yarn's been dyed grey and black. But anyway, from afar, from the photos, it looks like it's a natural sheep version. And it was just the absolute perfect... Uh, momentum to get me to cast on because I have in my stash um, quite a large amount of various Aran weight speed specific yarns from Blacky Yarns. Um, to be specific I have a big bag full <laughs> of uh, 
of these iron weights and some are DK but they can be doubled up and the pattern called the size I'd like to make of the penguino cardigan is iron weight so um yeah I, these yarns have been in my stash for about five years I bought them um about six months after I discovered spinning and blacker yarns because all of a sudden I wanted to get my hand on as many different breed specific yarns as possible and I was spurred on by the then Knit British now Woolwork audio podcast with Louise Scully and um, I heard her talking about a Aaron Waite breed specific blanket somebody had made for her and I think that was my original intention was to make a blanket but for whatever reason I've never got around to doing it and these yarns have been in my stash and although I could make Aaron Waite socks and hats from them like there's enough to make a hat I've got generally two balls 250 gram balls of each um of each breed I don't want 20 hats uh <laughs> And I can't sort of give them away because uh, some of the yarns are quite uh, toothy, shall we say. Um, I've got some Black Welsh Mountain, I've got some Hebridean, I've got Manx, I've got Jacob, uh, Wensleydale, Portland, uh, North Ronaldsay, Ryland, Norfolk Horn. I've got a whole range of British sheep breeds. So... Anyway, when I saw this version of the Penguino, I felt really, really inspired and I spent that evening making a swatch and then the next morning I cast on and so this is my Penguino so far. Um, if you're familiar with the pattern, it's knit in a sort of modular way, so you knit the back, this is the back panel, um, so it that's half the size of the grey and I was inspired to make it too too toned so the back is knit first and then you pick up stitches along the side and knit some welts and then on the other side and then you start adding in the sleeves and it all just looks a bit chaotic but really fun and I'm so so enjoying this project it's where the Gentle Days cardigan is making me feel a bit sort of bit down in the dumps this is really really lifting my spirits a lot so um so the first yarns that I'm using are North both North Ronald say so there's a natural grey and then a natural white and the North Ronald say is um a sheep breed found on the island of North Ronald say which is one of the isles of Orkney right up at the top of the British Isles so it's a white and uh, the thing I love about this sheep is that they eat seaweed back in the 19th century when the inhabitants of the island had to return to subsistent farming as a means of income after having um, spent quite a number of years collecting seaweed they decided to build a stone wall all around the shoreline of the island and they kept the sheep on the seaside of the wall so that their crops were protected from hungry sheep and as a result the and as a result the sheep started to eat seaweed so they're very famous today for eating seaweed. <laughs> well, I think my uh, my time for podcasting has now come to an end. So I'm going to say bye-bye for now. And I look forward to seeing you again really soon. Take <laughs> Teddy Robinson. Teddy Robinson. I think that's my cue to say bye bye. So I wish you well and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Take care. Bye bye.